I'm freaking bad. I forgot the lights. I am freaking back. God, that is so bright. I literally went to dinner and just uh just left this game all open. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough lighting for now. Uh, so here we go. Round two, let's start off with Dragon Sword. Since there's just no avoiding that poison thing. It'll give me a good head start as well. Reflect that. Here come the curse. I'm gonna go for demon bow and then heal. damage as well as that damage. Well, I have made a miss. I have made a great blunder. Never mind. to do the drain thing again. Alright. We're still in the game, baby. Uh, dragon sword. I don't know how I'm supposed to win against this. I'm sure I'm winning. again. Healed so much now. How do I beat him?
I need to deal damage. Oh. I am very screwed. How do I beat him? I can't switch weapons. Do I just need to start over? Because this seems impossible with what I have. I'll try one more time. I'm being a bit more aggressive. Gosh, how much HP does he have? the max HP drop thing again. My god, just barely clutched that. Nuke! Okay, I'm gonna die there. Alright, all or nothing gambit here, apparently. Yes!
You sure are lucky we followed you here. If we hadn't, who knows what would have happened to you. Oh, let's tie him up. Okay, let's tie him up, I mean. Hmm. No funny businesses. Okay. Move it. You fool. I told you a million times not to go into direct sunlight. Ugh. Hey, hey! What are you doing? We were just about to tie him up. Shut your trap. This is my father. He's coming with me. Let's get out of here. Bruh, that is one tough Quetzalcoatl. Stop! I demand of you another battle! Oi, hero. It can talk? You said beating up girls wasn't hero-like, right? Well, I'm a girl. You idiot. Ha! What a moron. Alright, we're out of here. <laughs> He's escaping! We've got to stop him. Nah, this is the end of this adventure. Chasing down Krace will be another story for another day. Congratulations. So shall we head back? We prepared a little celebration. I suppose I could honor you all with my presence. Hmm, is he invited too? I thought the party was for Helen. Now, now, be nice. They can all come. I don't mind. Why is the Demon King deciding who comes? He didn't help with the preparations at all. Hey, Zach's still waiting for you, you know. Artist, too. Can't pause anymore. Hey, remember me of the Golden from the sixth floor? You beat me up and it became this tiny. Only kidding. Good job, though. What? Ah-ha-ha! Ah, fighting is awesome! And after a good fight, you always need a good drink. I know you'd pull it off. Nice. Here, have a hamburger. Cool. Can I just have a hamburger in every plate? <laughs> in every... Kyle. Hey, good job. I beat up some of the bad guys for you. I'm a hero. This place is too bright. <laughs> I know you don't want to hear it, but you're pretty heavy. Cut down on all the stakes. Here's looking at you, kid. Hey, fairy, can I borrow your wings? Yowch, get off. I bought two, you know. Good warriors are always good drinkers. Aha, I am the Lord of Chaos. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Hey, <laughs> I'm going to miss being your rival. So was I a tough opponent? You were certainly quite annoying in many instances. You really was a goddess. Thank you. My body may be rotting, but my heart is as fresh as ever. Thank you so much! I'm so glad we can live here in the town now. I mean, being in the dungeons was okay, but this town is really, really nice. Ah, you're looking for the hero? He went up to the next floor. Nice. Maybe I thought I was joking, but seriously, the mayor is super crazy. I bet even the Demon King is scared of the mayor. Now 
I can live here forever. That was so awesome. I'm so glad the weapons I worked on helped defeat Kreis. Come back and stay with us whenever you like. The pub is too noisy. I hate noise. Would you like a drink? Sure. This is nice. Drinking with friends is nice. Hmm, I have said too many words today. Welcome back, I'm afraid the second and third floors are closed. Leaves only one place left to go. <coughs> hey, are you ready? For what? Ah, you found me. Sorry for causing you so much trouble. Nobody told me who you were. I thought you were a bad guy. No big deal. It's chill. Give me back my thunder. What? Wow, you sure are strong. Oh, am I glad I checked there? I'll be flying home soon. Truth is, my job was to stay here and make sure you never left this floor. But when I saw the determination burning deep in your eyes, I knew you wouldn't rest until you'd found the artist. Thank you for coming to say goodbye to me. It was a pleasure, student. Thank. be honest, I'm having a bit of a hard time with you. I'm not even really sure why he thinks to you as a sister. Ah, perhaps I've said too much. They're waiting for you. Take care. You know, at first I really didn't want to do this job, Helen. But it's actually pretty fun. Are you ready? When you're ready. Barry can't carry both of us. You'll have to take the Griffin. Are you ready? Oh, here we go. So, Mr. Hero. Yes. The fairy and I will look after her. We'll have to take her to see the king first. Right. All right. Mr. Griffin, would you mind? Get to one.
Here we go. Helen, be careful out there. This is goodbye. Mr. Hero, look after Helen for me. Understood. Okay, Fairy. You have to carry me again, so her name is literally just Fairy, huh? What? Why don't we use the other Griffin? I think the one Helen was originally meant to use is around here somewhere. Wait, that was a griffin? I thought it was a dragon! I- he- I don't think he can fly right now. Ah, uh, Which means... Barry? That you'll just have to carry me. Aww. Yeah! Oh, shoo! Oh, it's not that bad. I'll get you for this! Can you get a move on already? I can't even see Helen and the griffin anymore. Stop yelling at me! Now I'm kind of lonely. Nice. Alright, so the credits are rolling now. Rick. Nice image. Alright! So, that was Helen's Mysterious Castle. <laughs> what a great game. <laughs> Honestly. I really enjoyed my time playing this game. I did uh, get kinda tired halfway through and stopped. But I continued, and I finally finished it, and man, uh, what a great journey it's been. It was. There were an odd, an oddly a large amount of original not, not RPG Maker default assets used throughout this, huh? It's pretty cool. What's there to say? What is this place? What? In terms of translation as well, uh, first uh, first thing to notice is this game is originally in Jap Japanese. But whoever did the translation, they did a great job, I think. No grammar issues or whatever. Obviously, I don't know the... There you go, that's how it ends. Okay, fucking Kraid getting away. I mean, I guess it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. So, all in all... Uh... I'll start off with the great parts, and in terms of bad parts, uh, usually I never shut up. Especially when it comes to games that I love and I always just never stop. Can I always seem to have something, a lot of bad stuff to say uh, when it comes to the final part uh, of a series. But uh, the only real potentially bad part you can say about this game is that it is short. But like that's to be expected of an RPG Maker uh, game, I'm pretty sure, I think. Uh, to me, I think this game is just the correct amount of length. Man, I wish we were- I wish we could have gotten to 100 HP. <laughs> Man, they were so stingy there. Oh well, I got to experience 100 HP at the very end with the final few battles. <laughs> like, the Demon Lord has 250 whole health. I think that was pretty epic. Uh. So yeah, the positive. Starting off with the story. It's good. It's super simple and basic and it definitely it definitely isn't the main focus 
Like, it starts off as this, uh, simple thing, like, Helen barely even talks and the world gets barely elaborated upon at the start. So at the beginning, you feel like there really isn't much of a story, but as it progresses, uh, the lore does get, uh, pretty deep. Uh, but, like, ultimately, it's, it's generic, uh, fantasy, uh, plot. Uh, although the hero and the villain are relegated to just backdrops and it's all about Helen and her uh, uh, journey throughout this castle. And uh, it definitely has a very joyful and what's the lackadaisical? I don't know the word for it, which is perfect and it's even reflected uh, and corely reflected. Uh, on Helen as a character. Uh, she is, after all, a homunculus that was revived and g and got amnesia really, really young, at a really young age. And like, she didn't know how to read until halfway through the game, uh, which showcases her innocence and childlike nature despite being as old as she fucking is. Like, she's probably, like, more than a hundred years old. But, uh... Yeah. But, like, ultimately, it isn't nothing too original, nothing too groundbreaking, but, like, it gets the job done, and it's interesting enough that you could get invested in it, but otherwise, if you really just wanted to have fun playing with the gameplay and stuff, then, yeah. And speaking of the gameplay... The Witch's House started this thing uh, with RPG Maker games. Uh, where... They just started... Where they just straight up ignored core features of the engine. Namely... The combat system. And it's just been an ongoing trend. Whereas RPG Maker games has become used uh, more specifically to make horror experiences, but uh, there had eventually been more uh, puzzle, just puzzle oriented and not really horror and just focuses on the story. But eventually, uh, RPG Maker's game started cropping up again where there were combat systems. And even as early on, well, that, this uh, Corpse Party was made before uh, the Witch's House, I'm pretty sure. The Witch's House was made in XP and the original Corpse Party game, I'm pretty sure, was made in the very same engine Helen's Mysterious Castle uh, was made in. And that one, uh, I guess you could say, started it, but like at the end of the game, it it, re it really wanted to remind you that, that, that you were playing an RPG game <laughs> uh, by having you do a boss fight, and it's like the one and only fight, and it's not... It's not even all that hard, and honestly, the fact that uh, you suddenly, after all this time, that there's no RPG Maker battle, uh, there's no turn-based battle, and then suddenly the final thing of the game has you doing puzzles and stuff, uh, has you doing a turn-based combat, it's really just way out of left field, and it is comedic, but like, it, it just doesn't fit, it just wasn't all that good. But yeah, game started cropping up again, where uh, there were combat again, and they started off pretty rough. I believe uh, there's Off, there's Omori. Omori is a later uh, RPG Maker game. No one was made in VX Ace, despite being a pretty recent game. Uh, it was made in 2018. RPG Maker MV uh, games have been cropping up left and right since that. Uh, are at that time already. But, uh, well, Omori has been in development for a long time, <laughs> uh, as far as I'm aware. So it makes sense that it uh, was just stuck in VX and uh, didn't fall prey to the mistake of trying to switch engines mid-development like freaking uh, Duke Nukem <laughs> tried to do numerous times, which is just straight up a bad idea. <laughs> Uh, and then, so yeah, there was off, there was, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It was just, uh, the game was mostly, like, uh, 
uh, the overworld has you turning or left and right and it's more like a platformer but you don't really jump around all that much anyway well, there is elevation i forgot what it's called but like it's in this post-apocalypse and then you gotta drink this uh, addictive drug called joy and that one had a pretty good uh, combat system now i have no idea when uh Hell's mysterious castle was made uh but uh, around the time Amori came out, a few years before that, the RPG Maker games that were being made, people were starting to get good uh, at knowing how to make uh, turn-based combat. Uh, so they were uh, becoming really... Uh, so the, uh, uh, the battle systems, they're becoming more complex and more amazing. But like, there was still a distinct difference between overworld travel and puzzle solving. And then the combat. There were still there. There were always those three uh, phases, like how in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, the philosophy of a dungeon master or whatever it's called. There is the exploration, the socialization, and then the combat. Uh, and RPG Maker also has uh, RPG games also have their three pillars of uh, exploring, puzzle solving, uh, and then the combat. <laughs> Uh, where uh, puzzle and exploring uh, explo uh, puzzles are relegated to uh, the uh, pillar of exploration in D&D, but like exploration is the socialization in RPG in video games because you can't really interact much with NPCs there. So it's exploration in the sense that you talk to people and you learn about stuff there, and you get to accept quests and you get to do those quests, which I I categorize as uh, exploration in a set uh, technically this game though this combat system uh, of this game was ba it was basically the main selling point of the game and it was essentially the entire game and man I loved it it was so interesting through and through like well when you first start off with just the bow and the shield and you got a feel for the weight system like Oh, it's so good. What's interesting as well is that usually uh, the way RPG games uh, make their combat interesting is by adding so much complicated shit. I'd compare to anime fighter games, you know, like there obviously there's always the meme with Junpei where uh, you have this hit and the bat and miss and strike. And, and there's the bases that you gotta run across and then uh, you, uh, and all that uh, bullshit. Basically, he's a character uh, that you can't describe in like at least one paragraph. You need to write an entire essay uh, just to describe. Uh, and then someone's gotta read that paragraph to learn what Junpei does. Uh... Amori and off and other RPG Maker games certainly don't go way too overboard. Like they're not uh, Mary Skelter or Blue Reflection uh, levels of stupid bullshit depth. Although the uh, Blue Reflection really isn't all that in depth. And Lydia and Sewell also has a pretty simple uh, one. It's mostly all about the alchemy there, because obviously that's that's what the Atelier series is about. Uh, Hyper Dimension Neptunia. Basically, any game made by Compa, <laughs> Idea Factory, Compa, Compa's character in Hyper Dimension. Not. Uh, and yeah, uh, uh, this game as well. There you go. Those are the three games I can give examples of where they used uh, complicated and lots and lots of mechanics to add depth uh, to their combat. Uh, because uh, it will be the main thing so uh, while that's great it does work but at the same time just due to how complicated it is it runs into the problem where there's no real easy and or fun way uh, to give a tutorial and describe and explain how to play uh, and enjoy and understand uh, the mechanics that you have like you, like you can see that with most uh, gacha games as well, like Genshin Impact and Toho Lost Word. Uh, they ultimately become really simple once you understand how everything works there, but like, uh, 
before you can even understand, you'll just be stuck uh, uh, just getting a feel for things and not really understanding things, which will be very detrimental because then you get into the late game and then you realize that, oh, you need crit rate and crit damage. Uh, that's, the w that's the way you get the most damage. But wait, not everyone uses crit and crit damage. There are the supporters uh, and healers like Barbara. Or you don't want crit rate or attack for her. You want HP. Oh, and let's not forget the talent level up. And like, uh, yeah, just all this stupid mechanic that you just need to wrap your head around before you can truly enjoy and get good. And I'm saying all that because Helen's Mysterious Castle does none of that. It it doesn't even really give you that much of a tutorial, doesn't it? Like you just go, you just go into the game. Uh, you learn how to move around first, like get a feel for the controls. Like you just start off. Uh, you are given basic control things. That's that's to be expected and stuff, you know. Like, Helen can't even read, meaning minimal reading comprehension is required, at least in the beginning of the game. It does get wordy. Aw, oh, poor sheep. I'd have to die. Then you gotta- you go into your first fight. And yeah, nothing is explained to you, you just go in. And then since you only have the longbow, you really only have one choice. Then you learn how the HP and the animations work and like it just does such a good job explaining things uh, as concisely as possible without even using any words. And you and you know me, I I love tutorials that don't use words. It, it, it's it's just so rewarding. Uh, I already described this, but the combat system, uh, it, there's no variance to it uh, outside the combat itself, the 1v1s, uh, the overworld exploration. There aren't much puzzles, but the way the enemies move and how you can try avoiding them and stuff, which becomes kind of important uh, in the future. Is there does come a point where it's just way too risky uh, to get enemies and you're already leveled up on stuff anyway and you no longer need the XP and all that crap. Yeah, it's just one big puzzle all around and I love that uh, way of handling a fight. A combat system, especially a turn-based one. Cause yeah, why wouldn't a turn-based combat uh, be all about strategy and planning ahead? Like, that's what I love uh, about Advance Wars. That's why we play games like uh, War Game of Generals or fucking chess and stuff. Because there's strategy and Advance Wars does have some variation. Uh, and I guess that's also why I don't like... Uh... I guess that's why I don't like the Fire Emblem games that much because they are more roleplay heavy than they are combat. I mean, don't get me wrong, there is strategy there. I will admit that I am just a stupid freaking idiot. But like, oh man, there's so much crunch, you know? Uh, to be found in a game like this. Like, you wouldn't think with just these things, but like the way they're described uh, and the way they're taught to you and the way you progress, it all just blends together to make this really great. Now, uh, the criticism, like I said, one of the criticisms uh, someone pointed out in the, in the Steam store is that the game gets repetitive, which 
Uh, that's an understandable mindset. There does come into a point uh, within the three major levels, I'd say, of the game. Where, uh... It becomes, it starts to feel repetitive because uh, you come to a point where you have so much XP now and you've already got so much good weapons that nothing's just a challenge anymore. At least until you beat the boss and progress to the next area and then in which point you're literally right back to square one. So yeah, the, uh, the game has a really weird difficulty uh, game and gameplay curve where you start off at the bottom like in the beginning of the game, you literally don't know much of the mechanics, but then you get a feel for the mechanics, and the game gets easier. So it starts off difficult, uh, but not that much difficult, and then gets easier. But then you get to the next section after you uh, beat the golem in this room. That's where I consider the next uh, part goes up. And then suddenly there's once again a big difficulty curve as you once again get more weapons and learn even more. Uh, about how the game works. Uh, but then as you do learn more about it and stuff, uh, and you get more levels for your weapons, the difficulty once again lowers uh, until it reaches an all-time low where it's just once again really easy and you get uh, and you feel really bored and easy of it. But then you beat the boss and once again, there's just a massive difficulty spike. And now you're back at square one and it can feel very demoralizing. Uh, uh, to see that uh, you were kicking ass one second and now people are kicking your ass the next. It feels pretty intimidating and then it becomes repetitive like that. Of people kicking your ass and you just trying to survive until once again... Uh, you level up and learn the patterns of enemies and get prop the proper weapons you need. But yeah, there is a lot of depth, like I said. All the weapons are well balanced enough that uh, you can uh, use lots of strategy. Uh, I will say though, I don't think... Uh, I didn't use m uh, much of the weapons. And yeah, I do believe the quick sp the quick move and the invigorate, the two buffing spells that you get, are actually kind of useless because uh, Pokemon uh, problem, I suppose. Kind it's kind of similar to that, <laughs> where you you have all this stuff uh, that can deal damage and then you have those where you can waste a turn trying to increase your damage output when you could just be using those turns dealing damage uh, I just think the the waiting time and the buffs they give you just aren't uh, strong enough to warrant them actually being useful. Like, uh, it really sucks. It really hinders the fact that there's spells, and the spells usually don't have a defense and a long wait time. It just means there it's not worth trying to wait and you and wait and try to find opportunities, which there are barely any opportunities where you can try using the quick move and the stuff. Uh, they can stack, so if you're like patient. Uh, but like, why would you want to elongate a fight? Just, just beat them quickly, <laughs> you know? But like, other than those flaws, if you can uh, learn to handle them and like uh, see them as challenges to be overcome and all that jazz, then it is a wonderfully crunchy system. With a lot of hidden depth and nuance, nuance that are just a whole lot of fun to discover and use and 
it, it remains challenging and entertaining, at least for me throughout. Although, like I said, uh, although that's a lie. I did say I got burnout. And in terms of bad things to say, again, with how small the game is and how uh, there's really only one thing to this game, uh, unlike, uh, blue re uh, say, Blue Reflection Ray, where there's just so many things to talk about. There's the dungeon exploration, and then there's the combat, and then there's the progression system, and then there's the story, and then there's the the dating simulator aspect and the, the uh, how they connect like dating uh, gives you story as well as the progression which means uh, to progress you need to do dates and therefore be engaged with the story uh, but by engaging with the story and doing the dates it, it disconnects you from the combat because the main way you can get strong isn't actually by fighting which kinda makes the dungeons a uh, kind of a moot point and stuff. And so on and so on and so on. I could keep going on, but I've rambled long enough. Uh, so, yeah. All in all, safe to say, in conclusion, I like this game. I enjoyed it greatly. And, uh, you should buy it. There is absolutely no reason I am advertising this game now. Like, it is cheap. And for the experience that it is, it's definitely worth your money. Like, I, I can say that wholeheartedly. Like, support the creator of this game, because man, what a great game this was. <laughs> uh, now for the... Now for the rating, what could I give it? Aha! I give Helen's Mysterious Castle a wooden shield out of 10. You wouldn't think there's much to it. I mean, it's a wooden shield. It's a circle. You use it and you you point it at an attack that's coming at you and it'll protect you from the attack. It's simple, it's bare bones and it gets the job done. But like as you progress and you learn more and more about what exactly the wooden shield can do, its strengths its weaknesses and you start learning and you start getting better uh, you just continue appreciating uh, and loving what your wooden shield can do for you and then when it turns out uh, and then eventually it becomes way too easy like your wooden sh your your skills with the wooden shield your blocking skills they become too good <laughs> And now nothing can get past your iron, wooden defenses. But then, suddenly, uh, a stronger opponent shows up. And it turns out, uh, your wooden shield just isn't sufficient anymore. And you need to find something else. And then you get stronger again, and the process just repeats. And it's frustrating, oftentimes. But like, it's engaging. And most certainly rewarding as you will go through the uh, challenges. This wooden shield, the second weapon in the game that you get, uh, I believe represents Helen's mysterious. What I feel about Helen's mysterious castle, quite nicely, sums it up. Nice and simple, gets the job done. Teaches you about patience, cause. You know, you gotta block a lot of attacks and wait for opportunities to use your longbow and get some quick shots in. It's like you, uh, enemies are too strong and you barely have any health in the beginning of the game. And uh, uh but yeah, but uh, yeah. Wooden shield out of 10. See y'all.